well, thanks for coming on the show. Um, it's a pleasure. Yeah, uh, last, I think it was November, Mike interviewed Justin Ratner mm -hmm. about Exascale stuff, and he estimated that uh, Intel has over 300 people working on Exascale in various areas. Um, why is this project so important to Intel? It's a great question. So, first and foremost, Exascale represents for a company that's uh, that's hungry to partake in innovation on a daily basis. One of the most exciting challenges across the portfolio of things we do, whether it's from designing transistors, power efficient transistors, to microarchitectures, to packages, uh, to IO and memory structures, to software. Uh, we have them all and they all are excited by the level of challenges Exascale uh, presents. Secondly, from a business perspective, as we look at the growth of the top 500, uh, continuing to grow Exascale or the high end of compute is a very good business for us. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've done studies as well as looked at other people's studies of the rate of growth of the top 100. And in many, across many studies, just the number of sockets that are going that could be deployed as the top 100 continues its trajectory of growth, or if it did continue the trajectory of growth, uh, would be a very meaningful business uh, by by any standards. The third is we are really excited about Exascale being a beachhead for innovations that affect a much broader swath of business than just high performance computing. Many of the, for instance, power efficiency and integration challenges that we may first solve for Exascale would fall right in the um, area of some of the other, what we would call consumer businesses, such as handhelds and extremely energy constrained devices. Um, Many people have said if you get to Exascale in 20 megawatts, that's probably two picojoules per op. Uh, that's stunning. And the question isn't to us, just what kind of high performance compute could you do if you had two picojoules per operation? It's also, what kind of cell phones could you build if you had two picojoules per operation that could be your gateway to the internet that could be as small as you want and it would probably last a year on the batteries that you have today. We ask all those questions, not just what great science could you do with that kind of innovation and breakthrough that Exascale is going to require us and will enable us to do. So let's double click on that. I mean, that's the target, right, that they've set. So a, an Exascale machine by 2018, but to be practical, it needs to run at about 20 megawatts or the electricity will be too expensive. Mm -hmm. What are the fundamental kind of breakthroughs that are going to be necessary just on the power? Um, you know, the, if, if you look, as I just said, if you look at the, the, the simple math, it comes down to two picojoules per operation and that includes getting the data for the operation, completing the operation and storing the data, right? Um, the fundamental breakthroughs that have to happen to achieve that is multidisciplinary. There's no one area that you can say, okay, Moore's Law is going to do it for you. You know, transistors are simply going to get more efficient. Or, hey, we're just going to have a new microarchitecture that's going to make all of this much more power efficient by removing speculation and a bunch of other things that the microarchitecture community has done over time. Or, hey, we're just going to write applications in such a way that they're not going to speculate or be branchy, right, and not waste power. Or we're going to do some funky levels of integration, and you're going to have all the data as local to you as possible, right? None of those by themselves are the solution. They're all parts of the solution. So we're going to have to look at extreme efficiency of compute, we're going to have to look at data locality and how do you not move data when you don't have to or maximally use the data you moved for as many operations as you can. We have to look at where you have integration that actually helps you lower power. For instance, can you eliminate some chip crossings? Can you find new technologies that drive bandwidth of an I.O. operation at 100 the original power without sacrificing the bandwidth? Right, So 
those physical technologies, the architectural underpinnings of how you minimize wasting power at all levels of the system, and then potentially even applications that now become power aware uh, and make best use of the hardware facilities um, that you know that exist. I mean, for instance, today, you know, there are things like turbo modes in our processors. They're, they're, they're kind of what I would call the infancy of exascale. There are some knobs and dials you can use. They just have to get far more pervasive and be connected to multiple policies running uh, and multiple areas where you can reduce power in a concerted way. But it, it has to be at all of those levels. Everything has to get more power efficient and they have to be coordinated better to get the maximum energy efficiency. Sure, sure. Now you were talking earlier about the importance of ecosystems to Intel when it goes about a business. If, if you were asked to build one exascale machine for one customer, would you still do it? Um, the answer would, whether it's yes or no, would depend on, in or, there's of course the financial consideration of you know how much money would I win or lose, or gain or make or lose, but the answer would be a very easy no if there was no technology benefit. So to the extent whether the answer is yes or no, is really modulated by in order to go do that, how much technology benefit in a broader ecosystem sense comes out of that effort, right? Uh, because we do research projects and somewhere in the spectrum if it becomes a machine for one user with a very spe specific set of innovations that really can be leveraged more broadly, that's a research project. We may decide to do it or not based on an opportunity cost. Our goal is to maximize any innovation we do and our partners do in the broadest ecosystem possible. 